Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today on this webinar. The webinar is Get Found on Google, the SEO basics. Uh, Ricky is my name. I'm a digital business advisor at Business Station. And so today what we're going to talk about, or basically what we're going to go through is how to optimize your website to improve your search engine rankings on Google, essentially, but also on Bing. The same applies to Bing by following some relatively easy to implement steps. And by following these steps, you'll improve your Google search engine rankings. You'll hopefully, because of that, attract more website visitors, which in turn should result in higher conversions. So whatever those conversions might be, but ultimately leading towards, you know, higher sales or higher leads, more members, higher subscriptions, etc. So today there's a fair bit to go through. And what I'm going to do is in the hour, try and show you basically everything you need to know. Um, but at the end of the webinar, I'll give you a, a, a link to various resources and also just a 12 point action plan. So rather than think about, you know, all these things you need to do, I'll make it relatively easy and give you just a step-by-step -step guide you can follow. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to talk about. So firstly, I'll just do a basic SEO overview, what it is and why you should be doing it. And then we'll talk about where you should start because it's a common question I get asked. And then we'll go through some of the basic things you need to do. So, you know, keyword research, optimizing your site around those, making sure your site performs well, all these other things. And then we'll go through that 12 point action plan. Okay, so let's just start off with talking about what SEO is for those that, you know, and even those that think they know, sometimes it might just be a little bit uh, incorrect. But basically, it's about really understanding who your customers are, most importantly, and what they're searching for. And what they're searching for needs to be, in terms of content, needs to be on your website. So there's a match to that search query. Second, secondly, you need to build your website's authority around that particular subject matter, topic, industry, but overall, just try and raise your website's authority. It's called the domain authority, but essentially, that's a long-term thing that you need to focus on, um, but that's what it's all about. And you can do that through backlinks, and we'll talk about that. And then your site needs to, very importantly and often overlooked, needs to be fast and secure, but uh, the security in, in most cases is often, you know, taken care of in most cases, um, you know, particularly on some of the, the hosted platforms. Um, security on WordPress is a different thing. You really need to focus on that too, but uh, it needs to be fast. Can't focus on that enough and particularly for mobile users. So let's just talk about the three things that search engines take into account when they're working out who to rank for a particular search term. The first thing, and I'm sort of covering what I just covered then, but the first thing is relevance. And this is how well your content matches to the search query. So this is often called on-page SEO. And this is really making sure that your content is in the right places so that Google can build a picture about what your website is about or your page is about. Second thing that's also important is authority, like I said before. So this is really what we call off-page SEO and refers to backlinks mostly. So how many other sites are linking to yours? Ideally, are those sites you know, from your particular industry and authorities in those industries, or are they from business directories, all these sorts of things? And also your social profile. So social signals, how many likes and shares and follows is your content getting on social media? And then thirdly is the performance, like I said before. So you can do these other two things, but if your performance is really poor, you're not going to really rank anyway. You'll struggle to rank. So it's really three things you need to take into account. So like I said, so... SEO is mostly about optimizing your site's content. And it's about developing things like page headlines, uh, you know, product and you know, descriptions or body text, metadata, which is jargon for some very simple things you can easily do yourself. 
and um, and also some internal links as well. And then what you need to do is optimize each of these pages or bits of content around a specific keyword phrase. So I, I use the word phrase there rather than keyword by itself, because we're really looking for three to five words, ideally, that you can try and optimize your site around in a phrase. And like I said already, and then making sure that it performs well and it, it's um, secure. So it has an SSL certificate, all of those other things. And other sites linking to you, like I said. So this is what we need to focus on today. So why do you want to do SEO? Well, there's a number of reasons why you should do SEO. And I'll try and convince you in this short slide. But basically, uh, you know, one of the reasons there was a research paper done by SEM Rush, and they studied the top 13 or 13 verticals, e-commerce verticals. And they found that of those 13, five of them, music, books, furniture, home, garden, electronics, relied almost entirely on organic traffic for their traffic to their website. However, for all 13 of them, it was still a primary source of traffic and their graph looked something like this. So of those 13 verticals, 50% of their traffic was from organic search, direct where people are typing in your domain, uh, or it's linked somehow through maybe a bookmark, 28%, 10% referrals, 6% or 7% from advertising, and just under five from social media. However, so that's e-commerce. If you're, say, an, a content site, so say a news site or a, a blog site, information type site, then it's going to be by far the number one driver of traffic to your website beating social media channels by more than 300%. So it is a good reason or, you know, why would you ignore basically uh, volumes of traffic like that? And the other thing is that it's free, of course, if you do it yourself, um, it's recurring. So when you stop doing SEO, your results don't stop. They'll, steep, they'll keep growing. And the quality of traffic that you're attracting will be more high converting because it's search-based, therefore they're searching for your product. Okay, so there's some good reasons why uh, you should probably be, you know, focusing on SEO. There's one that's not mentioned here, and that's really that most people do it pretty poorly. Uh, so if you think of your competitors and you think, well, if you can just do it a little bit better than them or even equally equal to what they're doing, you know, you're going to get a, a huge competitive uh, jump and potentially uh, an advantage if you do it better than they are. Okay, so let's just look at what we're aiming for here. So this is a Google search page. We all know that. And I'm just going to search for women's summer dress. And we see the results that come up here. I just want to go through some ways that you can potentially rank. So you've got advertising. This is uh, Google shopping type advertising. Um, you've got organic results some images as well, um, Google my business results. I'm in North Queensland when I did this, so uh, it's coming up with North Queensland type results and more organic results. So just so far on this one page, and then you've got some images, and there's you know, at least four places already that we are able to rank. That's the advertising, Google my business, SEO results or organic results, images, there's also the shopping tab. If your products are suited to, you know, the shopping type experience like this, which most products are, I think. The services, a little bit diff more difficult. But, um, you know, so that top row there, they're all ads. And everything below that are, what are referred to as free listings. So you can list your products on here if you have a product that's suitable for this sort of thing. And... Um, you know, it's getting more and more utilized, Google Shopping, even if it's just for comparison shopping, but um, also to find certain styles or colors or brands. And then, of course, there's images and there's video. So there's multiple places that you can rank your content, not just purely as a search result. 
And everything we do here today or talk about today will benefit all of these aspects, including your advertising. Advertising at the end of the, the day is, uh, is a search-based search advertising. So the more you can optimize your pages, and particularly the pages that uh, those ads are directing to, the landing pages, then the better results you'll get from your advertising. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of places that you can rank on a Google search page and a Bing search page. Okay, so that's what SEO is and maybe why you should do it. Now let's talk about why, where you start. So, you know, how do, I, how do you identify, you know, what you're doing or what you could improve on? So my advice there would be just to do an audit. There's lots of audit tools online. Uh, some are better than others. Uh, some are free, like the one I'm showing you here. So it's quite a superficial view of your homepage usually. And others like SEMrush or Moz will give you a more detailed um, analysis, but are also premium. Now, I think they might offer you a free website audit as well. I'm not sure you'd need to double check. But this one is website SEO checker by, it's actually by an organization called SEO Review Tools. Dot com and they're all the same you put in your url and it needs to be the right url the one that's on your browser so for some people that aren't aware if they've got ww's or not in their domain i would just recommend copying it from your domain pasting it in there and then putting the keyword that you want that page to rank for and then you perform a check so um these these ones here the basic ones they only, uh, you know, they'll only take a couple of minutes to do a quick audit, but it's a good way to get an, an idea of, you know, where you could improve. It's mostly checking, well, it checks a bit of off-page, but mostly on-page SEO results. So, you know, I've abbreviated this or edited this video. It takes a little bit longer than that, but not very much. And you're welcome to try it yourself. If you go to SEO review tools, Dot com you'll find it there plus a bunch of other tools so they all do the same thing they give you a score out of 100 and then they outline some improvements you can make and then all of them will also give you a checklist like a to-do list or most of them will so this one here gives you a couple of errors you could improve on so you need to improve the number and quality of linking websites pointing to your domain you need to add an h1 web page uh, h1 heading to your web page your title tag's too long, you're not using the focus keyword in your title tag, meta description is too long, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it gives you some good indicators of what you can do here. Now, most of these are going to point to just the basic things that you need to do, and that's what we'll talk about today. So we'll talk about the title tag and your meta description and all of those things. They'll also give you a bunch of other information too that can be quite useful. So, you know, how much volume that keyword's getting, for example per month what your title tag looks like so while we're talking about it your title tag is what your search result looks like your meta description is the paragraph underneath your title tag in a search result so it's slightly different it's not going to help you rank necessarily but it'll help you hopefully get more clicks when you are ranking um, so we'll talk about how you can optimize that okay so that's an audit tool it'll tell you what you sort of need to do or pinpoint areas that you could improve. I also recommend Google Analytics for not just for SEO, but just for understanding your website and how your users uh, interact with your website. Um, <clears throat> so if you don't have the actual full version of Google Analytics, I'd recommend that you do, you know, rather than maybe the cut down version that say Shopify provide, uh, you go to the Google Analytics site and it will provide you information like this. This is the home page. So I'll just quickly show you some information here. So it'll provide a wealth of information about your users. So, you know, how many users you had over a given period and what sort of revenue you were generating from the number of sessions you had. And you can change that time frame, you know, to give you a bigger picture view, making sure that it's basically trending upwards, hopefully. Also then the number of active users you've got on your page, these are all just nice to have type bits of information. Uh, also an insight that you could potentially uh, take action on. 
But most importantly, it's about your users. So where they're coming from and what time of the day they visit and what channels you're getting them from. So is it social media, paid search, direct organic search, other. So that's a good way to understand you know, what volumes are coming from which channels. And you can tunnel down further by looking at source and seeing if it's organic or uh, from Bing or is it from Google? Is it through uh, paid advertising, etc.? What your users are using in terms of devices, what pages they visit a lot, how many active users you're, you know, are they trending up or down, etc. So lots of useful information from Google Analytics. And you can also go into more detail like the audience get to understand who your audience actually is and how maybe different age groups uh, vary in their behavior, that sort of thing, and what that might tell you. So one of the key indicators here, this isn't a good example to show you, but bounce rate is that column there you can sort of see in the middle. Uh, if you've got a high bounce rate, and I just want to pause this for a second because this one here is an average of 1.15% bounce rate. Don't be misled by that because that's extremely low. Um, so most bounce rates are very high. I deal with on a daily basis, customers that have bounce rates of 50, 60, up to 90%. So if, and what that means is that someone's coming to your site and then they leave before they even engage with your site. So that's often an indicator that you might have a really poor performance page somewhere there that's stopping them from going any further. So and you could then tunnel down further and find out if that's mobile users or desktop or both. But um, that's usually an indicator. So you can see here, like I said, that one's very, very low, but you should have a check of yours because it is often a key indicator that something is not quite right on a particular page. Even if it's 50%, that's 50% of everyone that's coming to your website is deciding to leave before they, they do anything. So I do recommend that highly. The other thing I would recommend with Google Analytics is to look at behavior. Uh, so you can see how your users engage with your website and how they flow through your website. It's the only way you can sort of do that. You know, you can use like hot, hot spot type, uh, heat map type things to see what they're doing on a page. This tells you how they're flowing through particular pages. And you can change that. In fact, you know, you can choose it by the device they're using or a range of other things. In fact, there's a better one here, which is behavior flow. And if you go to behavior flow and then maybe choose the source of your um, traffic, where they're coming from, you can then identify different behaviors based on the, the traffic. So you can see Facebook users on this site are going to completely different pages than Google search pages, uh, Google users. So Google users generally will end up on your homepage or they'll end up on your product categories or your service categories or your collections type pages. And that's just the way search sort of works. Social media, on the other hand, you tend to promote a particular post or a, a particular product or collection, for example. So you're directing them or you know, you're directing them specifically to that page. Now, also important statistic that you might want to look at is just that red arrow there, which is how much traffic you're losing at each stage. So in the, on that particular page, 20% was, was being dropped before they, you know, went to the next stage, for example. So um, it is just, I'm not going to go into too much detail now because we only have an hour, but it is worthwhile looking at Google Analytics just to get a feel for, you know, where one page might stand out or you've got a high number of users doing something on a particular page. So that's the main idea there. So I would probably start there by looking at your pages and identifying bounce rates on individual pages and just making sure you, you're minimizing that bounce rate. So the bounce rate is usually linked to performance and we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, so you've done some audits, you've done some, looked at uh, Google Analytics, you've now got an understanding of where you might wanna sort of start. But like I said before, it'll mostly be in some of the areas I'm just gonna talk about now, which are those basic SEO basic areas. So the first is really, I'll go into a bit of detail on each of these 
in a second, but your site structure, you just need to make sure you, you get that right. So it's nice and simple, uh, not too deep and complex and logical. So, you know, you've got your products underneath a product category, for example, if it's an e-commerce type structure, it's just in a logical structure that makes sense. Then you've got to think about your keywords and what you're trying to rank for. And they need to be ideally multi-word phrases that you can identify. Once you've done that, you need, need to then, and that's on a per page basis, start to optimize these unique keywords on a per page basis. You need to start writing some content around them, essentially. So the headlines, a bit of a description and optimize that. We'll talk about how you do that. Security and performance, you've always got to keep that in mind. So there's no point fixing your performance and then you go and load, you know, a massive product image that's, you know, a megabyte or something like that. It's just going to hit, hit your performance and get you back to where you started at, at the beginning. <clears throat> just make sure you've got links. That's both internal links between products and from pages to other pages, as well as those external links I talked about. And then the, the sixth thing here is just thinking about your local customers. Uh, even if you're not necessarily focused only on local customers, it's still an important thing to do. And uh, we'll talk about Google My Business as well and how that comes into play. Okay, so let's just briefly touch on site structure. And this is important because it gives you as the website owner a structure around which you can then start to write your content. So they're like topics and sub subheadings, headings and subheadings, you know, sort of what you're writing about for each of those pages. So it also is important. So just from a, what's called a, um, an authority perspective, and this is why this structure and, and the keywords are so important when you are developing this in that the pages at the lower part of your website. So in this case, the products, what they do is they add authority to the page above that. So the product category page, and it might be a product subcategory and they in turn add authority to the category page or the product category, in this case, desktop computers. And they in turn, all those subcategories add or category pages add authority to the home page. And this is why these pages are more likely to rank on, on a particular search because they want to put the most authoritative page up on your website. So that's assumed that it's going to be either the home page or one of your product category pages, unless they're searching for a particular brand product. So, you know, iPhone 13, whatever, 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 then that might bring up a, a product page. So th that's the first thing. Secondly, it's easy for Google to crawl if you've got a, a you know, logical, uh, simple, flat uh, structure. If you've got a very deep, complex structure, you might not get a lot of your products. You know, if you've got thousands of products, you might struggle to get them indexed. Of course, it's also important because it's easy for your users, and it's probably the primary reason here. It's easy for your users to navigate your website. So when we talk about structure, we're also referring to your navigation at the top of your website. So that's got to be logical and, uh, you know, simple. So if you've got a lot, a lot of products, you know, I have drop down menus under logical subcategories, for example. So just some rules from that perspective, you know, keep it simple and scalable and keep every page, if possible, three or fewer clicks from the home page, if you can do that. Okay, so that's the structure around now you're going to sort of put some topics or some keywords to that structure. The keywords are super important. And it's, we know that's important because Google tell us that and this is a quote from Google telling us about how search works. So the most basic signal that information is relevant to them is when a web page contains the same or to a search query that is. So when a web page contains the same keywords as the search query. So that's how they can match those search queries to search results or websites. So today, if you want to get a goal out of today, it's really the importance of 
identifying and selectively using a target keyword phrase. And you could also sort of think about not just that keyword phrase, but maybe some associated terms that would be commonly used with that phrase, maybe some variations. And you need to identify this phrase for every single piece of content that you've got. So products are not such a difficult thing because they've often got a product name. So I would recommend if you start with your home page and all the, the sub pages below that, so product categories, for example, identify keywords. So I have those listed, say, in a spreadsheet. And then the next column, you identify what the primary keyword phrase is for that particular piece of content. And then you use that keyword to start to write or optimize your site, write some quality content. So that's the page title, the description, the copy. Okay, so let's talk about keyword research quickly. So it is something that's often overlooked and it's usually people assume they know what people uh, or are, are searching for. And, you know, they could be on the money, but it could be that you're just maybe not ranking for the, the right search terms. So when you're looking for a keyword you want to rank for, really there's three things. There's the frequency. So how often is that search term searched for? So the search volume. And you can find this out on something like Keyword Planner, which is a Google tool. That'll tell you how many average monthly searches a particular search term is getting. It'll also tell you how much competition there is. Now, I just want to point this out. This is in terms of advertising competition. It doesn't relate. Well, it does relate to SEO, but you're not, you know, what you want to identify is maybe not the most competitive keywords, but something a little bit just off the most competitive. But the way you do that, I guess, is you identify certain keywords that you can put together into a phrase. Okay, so search volume is the first thing. Second thing is competition, like I was just saying. But what would what I'm talking about there is something like this. We call them long tail keywords. Now, a, a short tail keyword or a single phrase keyword would be something like t-shirts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, t-shirts, you're competing against every single person that sells, manufactures, promotes t-shirts. Um, so your competition is super high. You're therefore going to find it difficult to rank. You'll get less volume or less traffic to your website. And because you're getting less traffic, you're going to struggle to convert to the level that you want to convert because you're just not getting enough traffic. So if you were to add a second or third word to that, you might start to, you know, start to uh, get some traction, but you'd still find it difficult to compete because it's still very highly competitive. Now, if you were to add, you know, third, fourth or fifth word to that phrase, then it starts to become a long tail keyword, which is going to be less competitive and you can then rank for that. But you can also rank for any combination of those words in that phrase. So in that, in the example on the slide, blue American apparel t-shirts, you could, uh, rank for any sort of combination of those four words. Most keywords are long tail keywords. So just to give you a simpler example, so rather than builder, you might use Mount Barker home builder if you build homes and you're in the Mount Barker region as your keyword phrase that you want to rank for and then optimize your page around that. If it's a dress that you're trying to sell and it's a product, obviously, um, then, you know, if it's got certain features, like it's a floral and a cotton dress, it's a summer maxi dress, then use those phrases in your keyword and use that keyword throughout your page in terms of optimizing it around that keyword phrase. If you're an accountant and you're in Perth and you focus on small businesses, then maybe for your homepage, you might want to choose small business accountant Perth as your primary keyword you want to optimize that page around. Okay, so hopefully that sort of makes sense. And the third thing there is relevance. So if your keyword is 
you know, X, Y, Z widgets, then you need to have content that around X, Y, Z widgets on that particular page. Yes, so Wolfgang's just asking about, I'm guessing you can all see that, but maybe not. But uh, so if I have a long tail keyword, am I still then ranking for the smaller keyword, which is part of that? Yes, so you would. But the same applies. You're still going to struggle to rank for that single smaller keyword, but you might rank for, you know, two of those keywords and they don't have to be next to each other. And you'll often see this in a search result when you search for something. The search result might have your, your keywords that you search for, but in different parts of a paragraph. So you're still ranking for that search term. So, um, you know, so home... Mount Barker Home Builder, you'd still rank for Home Builder, for example, if if someone's searching for that. So hopefully that answered your question. And that's one of the benefits of using long tail keywords because you're using multiple words in, in a phrase that you can rank for. Okay, so let's just talk about some how, how do you do some keyword research so just reinforcing what I was talking about there sorry about the blurry image here but if you think about your site structure and you think about this is where you need individual keywords um, for each of these pages so for example you need a keyword for the, the home page you need a keyword for each of those sub keyword areas so the, the sub pages and then if you have pages underneath those pages you'd need keywords for those you need keywords for each of the products okay so you know this is why you might want to start just by optimizing those primary pages that are likely to rank so your home page and those sub pages directly underneath that particularly your products and services sub pages and then what i would do is probably just start with a google search page so just open a search page and you know type in the search ter term that you know you want to see results for so i've put in women's cotton linen clothing four words in that phrase and so this is just a good idea to get some other words that you might want to think about using and also to see what other people are using so some people not doing it so well like linen uh, you know, the linen edit is more of a brand name, whereas their sub, the secondary keyword is probably the proper search term there. Natural fiber, women's clothing, that's quite well done. And then cotton, linen, knits and more. Um, so, you know, you sort of get some ideas there. Also down the bottom, you'll see some other, uh, other uh, search results. And also if you put your cursor into the original search result, you'll get an auto suggest feature. So you get three or four or five word phrases there. So affordable linen clothing Australia, and it might just give you some ideas. So the idea is maybe it's just to try and gather these somewhere, maybe on a spreadsheet or a, a Word document or something. Play around until you've got, you know, a few that you think would be good. Like so and maybe see what your competition are doing. I think Katie's have got the best one there, natural fiber, women's clothing. And then their second keyword is cotton, linen, knits, and more. So they can rank for, and you can see if I just pause that there, oh, sorry. Just gonna try and find where I was there. Um, I'm just gonna pause that. Ah. No, I can't pause it for us because I can't see that. Anyway, I was trying to try and show you how the words are in that Katie's example. They are actually highlighted there so you can see. I'll just go down the page a bit. You can see cotton clothing. Kate, on the Katie's one there, you've got cotton clothing and dresses all um, highlighted for some reason. I didn't put dresses in there, but anyway. I guess it's a type of clothing, but that's a good place to start keyword research, just a, go a search page. Then what I would do is take those results that you've sort of worked on, uh, maybe, you know, got even just a, a word per page would be a good starting point, and then go to Google 
keyword planner. It's free as part of uh, Google ads. So if you've got a Google ad account, just go there and uh, it's very easy to find. You just go to tools and settings on your menu and uh, there's keyword planner there. So go to keyword planner and it just takes you to this screen. And so if you go to discover new keywords, it's probably the best thing for SEO and uh, just start to put those keywords in there. You, you've done, done that basic research for. So I'm just gonna put in a few here, women's cotton top. Cotton top for women, even though that's sort of the same, but I'll put that in there. Sorry for my slow typing. Women's summer top. Okay, so three terms. You need to put a few in there to give it something to go on. And then you just click on get results. And it'll come back with a list of suggestions, including search volumes. So uh, it may be best to uh, order it or sort by search volumes, and you'll get an idea of, you know, some really good keywords that you might want to use for your particular page or content. also gives you how much competition there is in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So casual summer tops for ladies, only 10 to 100. So maybe not ideal volume there for me. Cotton tops. So cotton tops gets one to 10,000. I could put summer into that, summer cotton tops, which also gets uh, quite a few. And maybe think of another word I could use. It could be, um, you know, um, Australia, it could be, um, natural uh, organic cotton, for example, all sorts of different things that I might want to use in there. So as you can also see from this at the top, it allows you to broaden your search. You can add new keywords there, or you can refine the keywords on the right. So you can choose brands or in this case, because it's clothing, what type of clothing, color, what material it's made out of, etc. So that's where I would really think about starting. And you might find after doing a bit of this research, there are just some really key words that you could use that's going to attract a lot more volume to your website, a lot more traffic to your website. Okay. So once you've done that, you then need to optimize your page. So like I said earlier, this is about your on-page SEO. It's making sure simplistically that your keywords are in the right places because Google looks in a certain number of places. It'll look in the title of the page, the URL. It'll look in the first paragraph or two, if you're lucky, to see what, what it's about. And it'll look at the alt image tags on your images. That's really it. So if you've got those keywords in those places and hopefully a bit of content as well, so you can maybe use your keyword word more than once in the descriptions, then uh, you've really optimized your page around that keyword. So and you need to do it on, on all of these pages. So your home page is really, really important. Also think about the content that you've got on your home page rather than you know just a doormat. Try and make it a, a storefront or a business frontage, if you like. Um, different product categories or uh, products themselves just other pages that you have on your website services of course when i talk about products and your blog content so when you're writing a blog same thing applies you need to think about what am i going to write about and that what you're writing about should be that keyword that you've already done some research for okay then what you're going to do is optimize your content on your page so i'm going to show you a really simple example and then shortly i'll show you how to do that on a particular website. So I'm a mechanic in Darwin, uh, Tom's mechanical, and I've done some research and I've decided that I want to rank for car mechanic Darwin. So I'm gonna put that now in a few places. The first is in the title of that homepage. This is my homepage. 
So the home page is going to be called Car Mechanic Darwin, not home, definitely not home. It's a big no, no. So if your website's home page is called home, then you need to change that almost immediately. And, um, you know, it can still be a home page in your navigation. That's no problem. It can still be called home there. But in terms of what it's, uh, what it's called in Google land, it should be uh, the keyword in your title. And same with your URL. Now, just a word on this. So, uh, you know, you want to put your URL into your, in, your keyword into the URL of that particular page. But if you are doing that, just a word of caution, you are changing the URL. So that means if you change it, the new URL doesn't exist anymore. Sorry, the old one doesn't exist. And the new one, uh, Google isn't aware of that. So you need to tell Google about your new URL. We'll talk about how to do that. In terms of the old URL, you need to redirect that to the new URL. You can do that through, say Shopify does it automatically, but with WordPress or something like that, you'd need a, a redirect. You need to set up redirects for each individual page that you change. Okay, so like I said, in the title, in the URL, then I'm gonna write some content, you know, description if you like, and I'm going to put that keyword in there, ideally at least twice. But I can't just stuff it in there. It has to be conversational type English. So if you're not writing enough content for you to put that word in twice, that keyword phrase, then it will come across as spammy. So you want to make sure you've got at least two sentences, but ideally much more than that. Um, you know, ideally 300 words minimum, something like that. You can also insert here some associated terms so i know as a mechanic that people are asking for brake repair and roadworthy certificate so i'm putting them in there as well and then i'm linking from there directly to those service pages so that puts a tick in the box from a, a links internal links perspective and then the final place is just the images so i'm going to go to that image on the home page and i'm going to click on that edit that and put in my keyword in the image alt tag. And that's how Google understands what the images are about. And ideally, if it's got the same key phrase as your homepage is optimized around, it's gonna build a really good picture about what your website is about or that page is about. Okay, so that's really it in a nutshell. It's quite simple to do really. It's really about doing that groundwork. You know, what is the keyword that I want to rank for? and then optimizing each page, starting probably, uh, you know, the home pages, like I said, and the subsequent pages. Okay, so I'm just gonna reinforce this again. So in the URL, it's very important if you, just be sure that you can change that URL without doing the redirect issue. Uh, you need to redirect, I mean. Uh, you need to put it in the title tag or in the title of that page, in the body of that page, in the image alt tag. And the one thing we haven't talked about yet is the meta title and the meta, uh, meta description, otherwise you know, known as your metadata. So let me just talk about that quickly. So what this, just need to sort of get your head around this a little bit, is that what the meta title and meta description is about is displaying something on your search page that will attract people to click on your link. So it's not necessarily gonna help you rank, but when you do rank, you wanna make sure that it looks like people wanna click on, it'll look like people wanna click on that. If it says home, you know, people are never gonna click on that. But if it has your key phrase in there and it talks a little bit about what you do, then it's gonna give you a much better chance of getting a click. So it's fairly easy to do and uh, so what, what I mean by this too, in, in the meta title, you, wanna, you might wanna put some salesy type phrases in there that you might not want in the actual page title. So the meta title and the meta description allows you to alter it slightly to put some salesy things on there for it. I'm simplifying it a little bit here, but for example, in fashion, you might see often, you know, after pay available or um, free shipping Australia wide. And now this is something you might not want in the page title, but you do want people to see that. Uh, it could be new stock just arrived. Um, 
you know, sale on now, all these sorts of things. You don't want that in the title, but you do want it showing in your search result so people click on yours rather than, it could be brand names even, just to get people's attention if they're searching for that brand. So how do you do those? Well, you need to put it into, well, firstly, this is what it is, your meta title and meta description. They are limited to 160 characters for your description, 60 for the title, and you want to use as much of that as you can. And if you want to add it to your website, you need to add it to your HTML. Now, not a lot of people can do that, understand. So a lot of the platforms enable you to do it very, very easily. So I'm just going to show you some simple, um, three simple examples here. So this is Wix. If you're using Wix, for example, Wix allow you to, by going to the, the menu, the site menu, and clicking on the three dots next to individual pages, you can edit the meta title and meta description for each of those pages. So by looking at that one, you can see it's Charlotte McCoy, wedding photography. Now, I would argue that's back to front. It should really be wedding photography and then maybe brand name, Charlotte McCoy. Her URL is home. So ideally, you want to change that and make sure the old URL is redirected to that if you're changing a page name. And then the title, uh, it, it says underneath that, tell Google, sorry, the description, tell Google what the page is about. So that's Wix. WordPress, most people will use an SEO plugin uh, like Yoast or um, Rank Math or something like that, SEO Press. And um, they all allow you to edit the meta description. In uh, Yoast allows you to edit lots of different uh, meta descriptions and titles for Facebook and for Twitter, but also for your Google search result, you just edit the snippet and you can change that um, accordingly. With Shopify, you can change the meta description for any page or product at the very bottom of the page. It allows you to edit the website SEO. You can also, now this is, when it says edit website SEO, this is still, you still need to do those things I talked about before. This is just about what you're presenting on a search page. Now, just a word on Shopify for the homepage, you need to do it through the preferences section for the homepage. Okay, let's talk about writing a meta description and a title. So for the titles, you can do really one of those two things. I'm just going to go back there. One of those two things, really. This, the one on the right is sort of best practice, which is primary keyword, secondary keyword, brand name. And you can have a spacer between them. Or you can have keyword, maybe location if it's important, business name. Uh, and that's what this example is here, for example. So this is Jessica's yoga studio. They're in New York City. And her keyword is private yoga classes. She puts that at the front of a meta title. New York City as a secondary keyword. And then Jessica's yoga studio. And she optimizes it from there. Whoops. You can also do, I was just saying that you could do the same with your product. So if it's Nike shoes, men's and women's, free shipping, for example. But they've all got to be unique for each page. Now, the next thing we want to do is add, sort of doing this backwards here. This is sort of from least important to most important, if, I, if you like, but it doesn't really matter. Adding the alt image tags. So how do you do that? It's fairly easy to do. You just need to, on same thing on the different platforms, allow you to, when you're editing an image, to put that keyword into the alt text, alternative text window. So that's WordPress, Shopify, edit when you're editing an image, and Wix, it just asks you to tell Google what the image is about. So very important to do that and to include the keyword in there. So, yeah, a couple of things. Try and just be descriptive. If you're, you know, use all of your 125 characters, basically, if you can. Internal links, we've talked about this too. Just trying to add to internal links as, so this isn't something I'm suggesting doing all at once. You just do one page at a time. 
and improve each page uh, individually. So if you don't have any internal links on that page that you're optimizing, then just add a few. And a simple way would just be to link to some you know, products that might be an upsell or a cross sell or an associated product that might also be of interest. Like so, like I showed you there. And you really want to try and have maybe up to 10 if you can, particularly on the home page. And then the off page result, off page links we'll talk about shortly. Okay, so let's talk about how we would optimize because I'm running out of time here, uh, but I should be okay. We're going to optimize uh, a product. It doesn't really matter. The principle applies whether it's a product or a home page. Um, Shopify, it doesn't really matter either. It's the same principle supply. Okay, so like I said, Shopify product, it's already got some information on there. Um, it's got a product name. It's got some bullet points, um, you know, that are quite useful, I guess. And some images, which are very good, which is half the battle. And then I'm going to scroll down the bottom to look at the meta title and meta description. And you should just be able to see that not too attractive, not going to attract a lot of links, clicks, that one there, Cardigan CK04. So the reason why it's got CK04 is that this customer or this client uses that as the way they manage their inventory. I don't recommend that, but just for this particular example, I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to, I've gone away and already done the research for this keyword. Now, I'm not very happy with the example I give here, but because I could optimize it a lot better, but just for the example here. So I've changed that from cardigan to long sleeve cardigan. Now it would have been a lot easier or some, it would have been easy for me to say, add cotton to that, for example. So long sleeve cotton cardigan or women's long sleeve cardigan. So I could easily have optimized that even more, but let's say we've just gone for the three words for now. Now I'm going to change that description. I'm going away. I'm writing a bit of a description coming back i'm just going to replace that with a bit of a description so now it's a description that reads well quite well i might need to tweak it here or there but it's much more salesy focused it includes the keyword right close to the front i'm going to bold in that and ideally i should have had enough words in there to at least put that keyword in twice but for the time being we're just going to continue on. I'm going to add some links, internal links. So I'm just linking to one of the products there, which was dresses. It's a product category. So I'm going to put that product category link in and then just put a title in there for that link. Dresses and skirts. Ideally, I would have optimized that before I did that, but that's okay too. I'm going to do the same for tops. So just add a link there by clicking on the link and copy the link first. Then I go to the links button there, paste that in, and put a link title in there. Okay, so I've put the keyword in the title, put the keyword in the description, even if it is only once. Ideally, I've put a couple of links in there as well. Now, just make sure you've kept a copy of that keyword. Now we're going to go and put it some other places. The first place we want to put that I'm going to just leave the rest of the content there, by the way, it's quite informative. So I've clicked on the images here. I'm going to add the alt image tag. So just paste that in there and save that long sleeve cardigan. Now I'm going to do that for every image. Now th there is a debate about whether it needs to be different for every image. And Google hasn't really answered that question satisfactor satisfactorily enough. So what we want to do is probably maybe just err on the side of caution and maybe just change that slightly. So for the first few, you could just add a word, maybe in this case, front or cotton or black or whatever you might wanna use, or you could use an associated term, uh, synonym or something like that. So it's sort of a similar term. But for the time being, I'm just gonna put these in. I'm only gonna do three for now. I'll put rear in the back there and save that. So you need to do that for every image. Then what I wanna do is just, Make sure that it's in the right collection or right product category if it's uh, if it is a product. And then I'm going to scroll down and look at the website SEO. You can see it's, it is better. 
still not brilliant. So I'm going to edit that. And if I just scroll down a little bit here, I'll be able to edit that. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that CKO4. And maybe put a spacer in there. In this case, a vertical line. You can use a vertical line or a dash. I think the vertical line looks quite good. Cotton and elastin in this case. Another dash. Australian made. And I've still got 10 characters I can use. So I should try and use all of those up. But anyway, the, just for the case, just for this particular scenario, you can play around with that. Really, this should be the ideal, your secondary key term. Now, once again, I'm not entirely happy with that. But anyway, gone with that. Now you can also edit the, well, you could add some other things to that. Now you can see if I keep typing, it's too many words there. So I could just leave Afterpay on there or I could just delete it completely. You can also edit the description there. You can see that's also a bit long. So I would probably abbreviate that. So it's about the right number of characters, 160, and also use the keyword in that URL. And then you would save that and you've basically optimized that page. Even in this particular scenario, uh, not that well, but a lot better than it was. Okay, now it looked like I didn't change a few things there, but I did and I'll show you because now what I've done, I've changed the URL, that old URL doesn't exist. So if someone had bookmarked this page to go back to later, for example, they would get a broken link. So uh, you wanna make sure you submit the, well, in this case, when I changed the URL, Shopify asked me if I wanted to redirect it, which I did, but then I wanna go to, in this case, Google uh, Search Console and submit the U, new URL so it knows that the new one exists and it will go and index that. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Okay, so that's basically a very simple example of how you would optimize a page. You do the same for collections. I'm sort of running out of time here, so I'm not gonna do a collection. Principle applies, same principle applies uh, for the collections as for the product. It, usually you only have uh, less potential, not always, but less images. Once you've done that, like I said, what I would do is go to Google Search Console. It's a free thing to have. You do need to uh, verify your domain ownership to be able to do some of these things. And it allows you to add your URL in there for inspection. And uh, it's saying URL isn't on Google. So I just click on request indexing and it'll go away and index that, add me to a, well, add me to a priority list to be indexed or that page. So you can sit, sit back and relax knowing that page now is optimized and hopefully you'll start to see more traffic coming to that page because of that. And you've submitted it for indexing. So it says your URL was added to a priority crawl queue. Okay, so that's basically in a nutshell how you might optimize a page. I'm just gonna briefly talk about your backlinks and uh, you know how they build authority for your page. I've talked about that already. So I'm just gonna talk about things that you can do to fix that. So um, Google does use it as a way to understand you know, where the pecking order is essentially. So you need to try and focus on at least getting some sites to link to you. They might be industry sites or authoritative sites in your industry, including blog, blogging sites, for example. There could be other industry sites, certification bodies, uh, membership type sites, uh, industry associations, those things where you're listed on that site. And ideally you want in that listing, a link to your website. So business directories, uh, such as Google My Business, which is a business directory, but also any of your social pages as well, will list your website. There's also citation sites as well. So uh, I, I do provide a list of citation sites. These, I'll talk about them in a second, but these are business directories that you can easily get listed to. And that usually solves not all of the problems, but some of those problems. And you don't wanna make, you don't wanna just have links from any site. They need to be 
relevant or at least business focused websites. And really you need at least 25 of these pointing to your homepage. It's very, very important. So these are the citation sites I was talking about. So, you know, true local, local search, word of mouth, you know, uh, Yelp. There's a whole bunch of them that are, you know, legitimate business directories that also help you list your business on those particular sites in a particular business category. So having a link from there to your site is a, is a big tick in the box. So if you haven't gone to some of these, this is true local, they do a pretty good job. Um, you can just, you know, people use them to find businesses in certain locations, but you can also see at the top there, there is an add, add business button to show you some of the information. And you can click on that and add your business to that. You will need things like your ABN, uh, your business address. In a lot of these instances, you can hide your business address if you work from home, but uh, it is very, very important. So you just click on get listed now, you'll need to sign in and then you can have that listed. They, they ver take a step to verify it. And then within a couple or three weeks, you should potentially start to see the benefits of that. The other way to get backlinks is to think about writing a blog post, a guest blog post. So this is where you're writing a blog on someone else's uh, website. And that website is usually, in most cases, going to be more authoritative than you for particular search terms. They might be, uh, you know, specific to your industry. And the way to find some of those is just to search for write for us and then the, your particular industry. Now, if your industry is too specific or just not attracting enough guest blogs, try and go up a, a level, you know, from where you are. So maybe not as specific as a bit more generic. So as you can see, a lot of results come up and they all, if you click on any of those, they'll tell you what they're looking for, you know, how many words they're looking for, what sort of format, where you submit it to, you know, but you, you want to make sure, and they all do, you want to make sure that you get a link to your particular site from it. And ideally it's also going to attract traffic to your website from the people that visit that site. Now, even if you're focused entirely on say, the Australian marketplace, and this is a US based blog, I still would recommend it because it's still going to give you a backlink from uh, an industry website. Okay, so that's guest blogging, you might want to investigate that. Just very, very quickly, because I know I'm running out of time here. Do make sure that you if you haven't got Google My Business sorted, you should make that a priority, claim it by search, searching for your business claiming it that way or just going to Google My Business because that's going to give you a link, not just a link, it'll give you a lot of those things, but it's going to give you a link back from the Google business directory to your business. It also verifies you as a business as well. So I do recommend that. And then just focus on optimizing your listing. You know, maps might not be important to you. So, uh, you know, you could ignore that side of things, but uh, reviews are probably something that you should also look at focusing on getting those reviews, pointing people to uh, Google reviews when you need to get some testimonials. And uh, like I said, submitting your business to those citation sites. Just gonna flick through these. Just think about your performance. You need to, to test your performance. You need to go to gtmetrics.com and uh, just do a test that way to, to get a feel for how good or bad your website is and maybe get a feel for what's slowing it down it often is images, not always. Uh, if you've got a WordPress website, you might need to use a caching type plugin, something like a Lightspeed cache or uh, WP Faster, Fastest cache. Uh, if you're not a WordPress website, then you, know, you can look at all sorts of different things. But I think the first thing is to really make sure that you, know, you don't have too many apps installed or that sort of thing, but you've also optimized your images so they're not you know, massive images. And you can use an online tool like TinyJPEG to do that. And just to, you know, copy your image onto TinyJPEG and compress it that way. Or there's also ones like Batch Compress, if you've got uh, quite a few that you need to do. But this one also allows you to resize the image and adjust the quality. So it's quite good. 
Final thing is just to think about writing blogs to rank and attract traffic to your website. It really does work, uh, particularly if you thought about what you're going to write about and you write some, you know, decent number of words, a thousand words or something like that. And it's particularly good if you're searching, if you're writing about a, uh, or if you're answering a question in the form of a list or something like that. So, you know, I search for best handbag here. I won't go into it, but the basically the crux of the, the thing is here is that every result on this page is a blog post. So it does work in some ways. Now, quickly on that 12-step action plan. So do that audit, find out where you stand, then go and do some research for some keywords that you want to rank for. Make sure you've got your structure right and you've got a keyword identified for each of that structure and then start to write some quality content around that structure for each page and product, etc. Start with the home page and the category pages. And then also write those meta titles, meta descriptions. Make sure you've got a mobile friendly or fast version on mobile devices. Compress any large images with tinyjpeg.com and add those alt image tags, like I said before, that you're using on a per page basis. Add some internal links on each page as you optimize it, and then try to uh, think of three authoritative you know, industry sites that maybe you could ask for uh, or add your website there as a link. Submit your business to all of those submission uh, citation sites I talked about, so Yelp and True Local, et cetera. Just as many as you can, you don't have to do them all at once. Set up and connect Google My Business and all your social pages. So also maybe have some share, some icons, social icons on your website so people can share, follow and like, et cetera. Set up Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Really, that should be something that you do uh, as one of the first steps rather than one of the last steps. And then just finally, and this is really homework type thing, is try and think of a topic that you can write a decent blog post about. Um, and if you think about it as a, an, an answer to one of your customers' problems, how you're solving that problem, uh, it could be in the form of a list or you know, a 10-step process, for example, something like that, then you, you're likely to get some good rankings from that. Okay, so that's my 12-step action plan. Uh, hopefully that was of value to you. It is included here. I, I should have copied this link, but if you go to that link there, bit.ly.3v3, capital H, capital Q, 4, capital C, you'll find all the resources that I talked about, including that 12-step action plan. Uh, it's actually just part of this presentation as well. Um, and a range of other things I've just found on the internet that you might find useful. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email if you want to at ricky at businessstation.com.au and happy to help out any way I can. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. I hopefully you got, I hope you got some value out of today. And uh, yeah, it just starts with uh, starting basically. Thank you very much, everyone. Nokuthula, thank you. Thank you everyone for coming along and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll just keep that screen up there for a little while. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Daddy. Hi, everyone.